Hello, I'm Leo Laranjeira, and welcome to my Operations Management Introductory Course. In this first lesson, you are going to get introduced to the topic of Operations Management. So let's get started with its definition. Operations management is the function that makes, makes the products and services of a company. All the activities related to, to providing uh, in the production and delivery of products and services are within the operations function. And sometimes the operations function is called production or supply chain or manufacturing or project management. It has many different names out there, but basically you have to think about everything that make the, the products and ser services to be provided and delivered to the, to the customer. And the history of operations management is the history of general management itself. So we started with the handcrafting era, with the watch steam engine, we went to the industrial revolution with the economy of the machinery and the, the scientific management with Ford's production line, with the studies of times and motion, the invention of the computer. We're, it's all related to operations management. In the modern era, we saw the rise of total quality management, re-engineering, just in time, Lean Six Sigma, uh, the event of supply chain management. So everything here is again related to operations management. And in the digital era, we when we talk about big data, internet of things, physical internet, cloud computing, we're also related relating to operations management. And operations management is one of the three core functions of any organization. So every organization has at least has these three core functions. These core functions are are the reason of the for the organization to exist. They are related to the production, delivery, and selling of the products. So first, you have the people who create the products and services, products and services development. They create the products that are going to be sold. Then you have the marketing and sales area who are responsible for generating the customer requests. They, they sell the products and services that were created before. In the operation functions, finally, they, they fulfill the customer requests generated by marketing and sales. And so then we see that these are complementary areas. Other areas of, organiza of an organization, they are called support functions. For example, finance, human resources, IT, legal. They are extremely important to a company, but they are not in the core of this company. They, they provide the resources they, with support of the resources for the company to, to create, sell, and deliver products and services. And most of the organization's people are usually dedicated to its operations. And, and consequently, most of the organization's costs are associated to operations. And we can see that operational decisions, they are expensive and have long-term implications. For example, building a, a new plant, acquiring a new business, buying a, ma a machine that are gonna last, that's gonna last for years. So these decisions must be uh, coupled with long-term vision. And this is why they are strategic. If you buy an aircraft, for example, for an airline and you buy a new aircraft, you cannot get rid of it the day after. Actually, buying an aircraft requires a, a two years, one or two years before you receive the aircraft because they are made to, made to these, these decisions are 
have long-term implications and they are significant to any organization. And the components of the operations activities differ from one type of organization to another. Let's take this example. We have here four different types of businesses. We have an internet service provider, a fast food chain, an international aid charity, and a furniture manufacturer. What is the operations of each one of these, these businesses? Uh, in a furniture manufacturer, operations is making and assembling the furniture. In an international aid charity, is providing services to its beneficiaries. In a fast food chain, it involves preparing the food, serving the clients, and maintaining the equipment. In an internet service provider, it requires maintaining hardware, so software, and content. So we can see that these are, this involves different characteristics for different types of businesses, but it's all operations. And the operations functions is also intertwined with the other functions in the company, either the core functions or the support functions. For example, here we have the core functions in red and the support functions in blue and operations at the center. Operations receive from, from the product and service development function, the new product and services ideas. And they also gave, gave the feedback saying that whether or not it is possible to, to deliver that product or service. And also from the marketing uh, department, they receive, operations receive the market requirements, which might be different from one type of customer to another. Either you focus on speed or quality or design or cost. So these are different market requirements and we have to be, to be um, we talk one, one, one function to talk to one another. From the IT area, we have the support of the systems for designing, controlling, planning of the operations. We also need the human resources. We need people for the operations to happen. And these people need to be recruited, developed, and trained. And also we have a lot of interactions with finance and the technical, uh, the technical function for processes, for financial analysis and decision-making costs, in exchanging cost and production data and so forth. But there's not always a clear division between the three core functions or between the core functions and support activities because many business problems, they are in, in the boundaries between functions. For example, let's talk about the interaction of operations with finance. Operations is in, in, in finance is particularly interested in working capital with comprises uh, cash, uh, accounts payable, accounts receivables, uh, inventory. And it's hard to say when a decision that impacts finance and impacts operations, either they are in the silo of finance or operations, they are actually intertwined. So in, the, in this course, we are going to adopt a broad definition of operations management, considering all the activities necessary to fulfill customer requests. So here we have an overview of operations management. We receive material, information, customer facilities, staff, and provide products and services. These, these activities we call operation strategy, the configuration of these activities. Uh, these activities include products and services development, layout and flow, inventory management, distribution, quality management, lean operations, production planning and control, demand forecasting and management, capacity management, etc. 
So here I provide you with some uh, additional references. You can click on this link below and you can have a, a nice introductory video by Samantha Porter and these two books here that you can take a look for further information. You can also have a look on my website for additional resources. Thank you very much and looking forward to our next class. Bye-bye.